Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and today I want to talk about something that's really important to my collection, and that is managing my hoarding problem. And a great way to do that is through budgeting. Now I've talked about that on this YouTube channel before. I have a price cap of $25 per typewriter, unless it's a Barbie typewriter and then all bets are off. But I like to keep my typewriters in a manageable price range because I usually can't afford anything more than that. And as I'm looking at typewriters, I'm looking for something I can do some pretty easy repairs on and maybe sell it to somebody else locally. And I'm looking to test it out on this YouTube channel, which makes me no money. So this is just a fun hobby for me. In order to do that, I do set myself price limits. And it's a big point of pride in my collection that I can do it affordably and manage my collection for under that $25 price cap. All of the typewriters on this table, and you'll see there are a lot of them, were under $15 when I bought them and had pretty minimal repair jobs on them. And that makes me really excited about them. It makes it like a treasure hunt when I'm out there looking for typewriters. Not only does it have to be a typewriter and it has to be in okay enough condition, it also has to be under my price limit. And that makes it just a little bit more fun to me, a little bit more like a hunt. Sometimes I have to negotiate. It kind of adds to the experience of typewriter hunting. Now, I am not doing this to brag about how I get cheap typewriters in my area. I know other people have trouble finding affordable typewriters just based on location. I'm lucky enough that I'm in an area where I can get cheaper typewriters, but I do have some tips and tricks for those of you out there who are trying to collect on a budget, and maybe I can help you find a cheaper typewriter in your area as well. Disclaimer. I am not doing this video to offend anybody. If you want to spend more on your typewriters, absolutely go for it. If you're looking for something specific, go for it. And I understand that I'm very fortunate in the fact that my local area doesn't have a ton of demand for typewriters so I can get them for cheaper. I'm also a cheapskate. My favorite coffee is the cheapest coffee I can find. My favorite typewriter is the cheapest typewriter I can find. So that's just my personal perspective, and I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad about what they pay for a typewriter. It is all personal preference, and this just happens to be mine. So I want to start with one of my favorite typewriters in the universe. This is my Royal Futura 800 Covey from the 1960s. This typewriter I found on Facebook Marketplace for $12. Now I've set up an alert on my phone and I suggest you do this as well if you have Facebook to check Facebook Marketplace and put a search alert for typewriter in your local area. I find that typewriters, especially if they're listed for really cheap, tend to go pretty fast on Facebook Marketplace where I am, but typewriters that are listed for that $50, $60 range can sit for a while. So I have an alert set up on my phone. Every time somebody posts a typewriter for under $25 on Facebook Marketplace, I get a notification. And that's a really great way to be the first person to message somebody before you get into price negotiations if somebody else is interested. So when I saw the pictures for this typewriter, the first thing I noticed was that they had only taken a picture of this little sticker on the top as their front main photo. Now I knew it was a typewriter sticker, but other people just scrolling through Facebook Marketplace probably wouldn't know that. So I do find that you can find typewriters for cheaper if they don't exactly know what they're selling. So again, this typewriter was listed for $12. They didn't have a ton of photos in it, and it was within 20 minutes of my house driving distance wise. So we were able to message them within a week of them posting it and get that typewriter for $12 at a front door drop off. So check Facebook Marketplace pretty regularly. I check it every day. And I also sell some typewriters on Facebook Marketplace as well in my local area. This this does bring up a good point about selling typewriters if you're not just buying them off of Facebook Marketplace, and that is that you should know what your local market is like when you go to sell your typewriters. I'm in an area where antiques are not worth a lot. We're in a lower income area. We're not anywhere near a city. There's not a ton of demand for things like typewriters and other antiques, so we can get them for pretty cheap where I'm at. If you're somewhere that has a bigger antique dealer population, you might have more expensive prices. If you're in the suburb of a city or in a city, it might be more expensive to get antiques just because there's more demand and more people. Where I'm at, typewriters can go for pretty cheap because there's not a lot of demand for them. In fact, I think I'm the only person in the county buying typewriters, so I can usually get them for cheaper because of that. However, it also means that I have to sell my typewriters when I do decide to sell them for less than what I might get out of a collector. I do this for a couple of reasons. I don't want to ship typewriters. I think 
it's too dangerous, I've heard too many horror stories, and I'd rather sell them locally personally. It just takes the hassle out of shipping for me. But when I go to sell a typewriter, I might buy it at $25, but I know that I can't post it for more than $50 and get somebody interested. So I do have to consider that when I'm trying to make a profit off of a machine as well using Facebook Marketplace, because I know that my local area people will not pay more than that for a typewriter. So that's another thing to consider if you're buying and selling using Facebook Marketplace. Check the marketplace on there to see what the prices are like in your local area. If something has been sitting for a really long time at a certain price on Facebook Marketplace, you know that that's probably too expensive for your local area. So if you're selling, try to sell them at the market price. And if you're buying, set up an alert on your phone and always message people and ask them if they'd be willing to take less if that typewriter has been sitting around for a while. I had a typewriter listed in my local area for $50 and it was listed on there for a couple of weeks and nobody was biting. I actually messaged the lady and asked if she would take 20 bucks for it and she was delighted. So if something's been sitting around for a while, you might also be able to negotiate a lower price for that because typewriters are big and bulky and they take up a lot of space. So you might be able to get a lower price for that if it's been sitting for a while and it's just not the right price for the market. From that, let's go to my Smith Corona Clipper. Now I actually got this in an antique mall and antique malls are notorious for having really expensive typewriters. I'm lucky enough that my local antique mall has pretty affordable prices on their typewriters. I can usually get them for 25 bucks at my antique mall, but I was actually in Harrisburg when I purchased this typewriter and I had seen a lot of other typewriters that day and that weekend listed for around $45. This typewriter was $10 and the reason it was $10 was because people forgot it was there. It was actually in a luggage wall, a bunch of suitcases piled up against the wall, and it was just kind of shoved in there, which I think meant that somebody didn't realize it was a typewriter. They just thought it was a piece of luggage, and they kind of threw it into that pile, and it would have sat there for a really long time. So if you're looking for typewriters, my next tip is look in unconventional places and look in places where it might just be shoved in a case somewhere. This typewriter was $10, it didn't have the spools on it, but because of the case and I knew what the case dimensions were, I was able to locate it just visually looking at that luggage wall and get it for that really cheap price, even though it was in an antique mall. Antique malls can afford to keep their typewriters longer at a higher price because they're inside. It does take up a lot of real estate, but if they're just stacking cases somewhere, it can sit there for a really long time. So usually they're more expensive there, but if they don't know what they have, it might be priced a lot cheaper. And different stalls in antique malls might have different price points. So you might find a really expensive stall next to a very cheap stall in an antique mall. So you might have to dig around a little bit in a place like that to get a really good price for it. The problem here is that you can't always negotiate in an inside antique mall because the sellers are just setting their stuff up and then walking away from them and the store manager would then have to call somebody to see if they would take a lower price for it. So you can't always negotiate prices in an actual antique mall like you can on Facebook Marketplace, but you might find something really affordable if you're looking in places where typewriters are usually not. So look at stacked luggage, look at boxes, look under tables, there's a lot of places where you might run into a typewriter that you wouldn't normally think you would see an antique typewriter. Now that works for portables, not so much for big desk machines. Those are kind of hard to hide. The next typewriter on this table was this Remington up here in the front, this Remington Travel Writer. And this was actually $10 at a yard sale and I wasn't there to purchase this one. Yard sales are actually a really great place to find typewriters like estate sales and we'll talk about that in a minute because at the end of the sale, everything has to go or that person has to find somewhere else to put it. So usually you can find a way to negotiate prices at things like yard sales and estate sales because they can't just let it sit there for a really long time. So that's a really good tip as well. Go to places where they have to sell everything. Yard sales, estate sales. I actually wasn't there when this typewriter was purchased and it was purchased for $10 by a family friend who then dropped it off at our house. And that's my next tip. That is find as many people as you possibly can, tell them that you like typewriters, and all of a sudden you have a hunting force for you. So everybody in my family and everybody that's usually ever met me knows that I like to collect typewriters. I actually walk around with a typewriter purse so that when I'm out in public, people will see physically typewriters on my person. And that kind of reminds them of typewriters. I get called the typewriter girl a lot when I go antiquing locally. I'm just kind of visually putting it out there that I collect typewriters. And I do that for family friends as well because then when they're out there yard sailing or antiquing or on Facebook Marketplace, 
they might find a typewriter and send me pictures of it. I've gotten a couple typewriters this way, especially with my mom who would find Facebook Marketplace posts for me and pick up a machine for me. In this case, a family friend was at a yard sale, saw this typewriter, took pictures of it, sent it to my mom who sent it to me, and then all of a sudden I had a little $10 Remington that needed absolutely no work done to it. So that's my other tip. Find people who will find typewriters for you. Create a sales force. And usually you can do that and get a lot of machines from different areas because you can't be everywhere all at once. But if you have a lot of people looking for typewriters for you, you might be able to find some in your area, in places you never would have thought to go or wouldn't have spent time going to, and someone else could pick up a machine for you for pretty cheap. Okay. What's next? My next tip is go to estate sales. Now I had never been to an estate sale before 2021. It was actually on my bucket list for 2021. I wanted to sell some typewriters, go to auctions and estate sales. Not the best year to do it, but I was able to go to a few estate sales this year and I'm kind of hooked. And there's a couple of reasons I really like going to estate sales for cheap typewriters. Three of the typewriters on this table actually came from different estate sales and I got them all for pretty reasonable prices. This Smith Corona Sterling from the 1950s, 60s, I got for $15 at an estate sale. And then these two typewriters over here, my Smith Corona Galaxy 12 from 1975 and this Royal Sabre from 1978, I got the two of them for $16. Now estate sales like yard sales have a really interesting function to them and that's the fact that everything has to go. When you go to an estate sale or a yard sale, everything that's there has to be sold or they have to find something to do with those items. And that makes people really eager to negotiate with you or price things lower to get them moving. And where I'm at, nobody's buying typewriters, so they have to put a pretty cheap price tag on them in order to get them to move at those events. So all three of these typewriters I found at estate sales, I usually find estate sales through Facebook Marketplace. They will post them on there. They'll say this weekend, estate sale, go here. And then I also have two local areas that have indoor spaces where they rotate out estates for estate sales. And that's where I found these items. Now in both cases, these were kind of hiding under things. At my first estate sale where I found this Smith Corona Sterling, first estate sale I'd ever been to, they actually had both the typewriters I bought at that sale hiding in their cases under things. This typewriter was actually under a table in its case, and if you had just been walking by and not really looking down, you would have totally missed the case because it could have been anything. So I always suggest look under tables and look under things, even if they have tablecloths on them, look under stuff because typewriters and in their cases they can be kind of heavy and they take up a lot of space on a table so they might just shove that case somewhere else especially under a table and they might forget that they have it there and you might be able to then negotiate that price a lot because they didn't know that they had it and it takes up a lot of space. In my case, this typewriter was really in great condition when I found it, but the guy wanted to move it, and I had found another typewriter that sale as well. He bundled them for $30, so I got each typewriter for 15 Oh boy, more coffee. I was able to get both typewriters for $15. Now, both of them did need a little bit of cleaning and repair, and that's my next tip. Don't be afraid of a grungy, dirty looking typewriter. If you know what you're doing with typewriters, or even if you don't, you can usually clean up the exterior of a typewriter with some pretty easy tips and tricks. And I talk about that in my Typewriter 101 video, which you can check out at the link in the description. It's not hard to clean up the exterior of a typewriter, but if you don't know anything about typewriters, that might be a little bit intimidating. So they might think it's old, beat up, and broken, and put a really cheap price on it. And then you as a collector can go in there, know what you're doing, know that you can clean it up, and get it for a much cheaper price. In that case, I was able to get those two typewriters for cheaper because they looked a little banged up. So this typewriter was $15 because it was hidden, it looked a little dirty in the case, and I was bundling it with something else. That was the same in the case of these two typewriters as well. Over here I found them at a different estate sale at the same time. I walked into the estate sale and the first thing I saw was this yellow Galaxy 12 actually sitting on top of a table in its case. I knew instantly by looking at the case it was a typewriter. I walked over and opened it and it had a price tag of $8 on it. Now I know that that's a price that they want to just move the typewriter. It's big, it's bulky, they wanted rid of it, so I kind of snagged it. And then as I was walking around, my mom actually spotted, again under a table, another typewriter case. And we've kind of trained our eyes a little bit to look specifically for typewriter cases. And you should do that too if you're into collecting. 
train your eye to look around for typewriter cases. They're always gonna look different than a suitcase, even though you should be checking the suitcase areas as well for cases that just get misidentified. But typewriter cases have a very specific dimension to them. They're a little bit shorter in length than a suitcase because they're more square shaped. And in the case of some of these older portables from like the 1970s, their cases are plastic and they're not gonna have a normal latch on them. They're going to have more of a mechanical latch where you push the sides to open it. That's gonna look a little bit different than a typical suitcase from that era. So train your eyes to look for typewriter cases and then you can scan the area and find them a lot easier. Again, typewriter cases are gonna be more square than your typical suitcase. And even if you're not sure if it's a typewriter case or not, you should always check it. In this case, this was under a table and it was unmarked, which means that they didn't even know that they had it or that it was a typewriter and so what I was able to do was take my $8 typewriter up to the teller say hey I found another one what would you give me for this one and he just applied the same price to that one so I was able to get both typewriters for $16 and while I was there I was also wearing my typewriter purse they saw I was buying two typewriters the guy whipped out his backpack and said I found this at the estate would you like it for free and it was a ribbon tin so he just gave me a ribbon tin and then they started calling me the typewriter girl and now every time I go into that place they call me the typewriter girl so they know I'm coming but that is another great way to kind of get typewriters for cheap it's go to something like an estate sale or a yard sale where they have to sell everything and scan under everything for anything that looks like a typewriter case because Usually people will not open the typewriter cases and set them out. They just kind of set them under things for you to go finding them. And that turns it into a bit of a treasure hunt. Another tip I have is try negotiating and bundling. So I have a bit of an obsession with American pickers. As probably everyone can kind of guess, it's a problem. But one thing that I really like about that show is that Frank Fritz is always talking about the bundle and he's the bundler. In cases of typewriters, if you go out to an antique store, an estate sale, a yard sale, and you're just buying one thing, it can be harder to negotiate that price sometime because you're only moving one product for them. I usually will be able to negotiate $10 off of a typewriter. I can't usually get more than that off of it. But when I bundle things or buy two typewriters or my mom is buying tablecloths and I'm buying a typewriter, we can bundle those and usually get a lower price per item out of that because we're taking more stock from them and that frees up more space for them to put something else there. So if you're in a place that accepts negotiations, like a yard sale, like an estate sale, like Facebook Marketplace, try negotiating first and if that doesn't work, try bundling items together to get them for cheaper. Especially if you find more than one typewriter, you don't have to pick between the two of them. See if you can get both of them for a cheaper price. Negotiating is also another great way to get cheaper typewriters. Again, I find that I can usually knock $10 off the price of a typewriter by negotiating but that also depends on your area where you're at I was at an outdoor flea market at one time and it was about to rain and I was able to knock $25 off of a typewriter so if you're going outside to a flea market go on a rainy day <laughs> but if you're in something like an enclosed area or a yard sale just try knocking a couple bucks off of it so that the other person feels like they're still getting a good deal it can be offensive sometimes especially I found on Facebook marketplace if you offer too low of a price price and the person is just the wrong person for it, they can get mad at you or get offended by that price. But if you start small and try to find one that's already closer to your price range and knock a couple bucks off of it, you can usually negotiate the price a little bit better. Be really nice about it. Some people's tactic when negotiating is to point out everything that's wrong with it. And I'm just trying to be a positive person. I don't like to be too negative, but I do also like to be honest about the condition of a typewriter. So I will point out things if it's closer to my price range that I might be able to knock a couple bucks off of it. In the case of my Royal 10, I believe it was listed for 50 bucks and I was able to get it for 25. And the way that I did that was point out to the guy, well like, hey, these platen rollers look a little bad. I'd have to redo the paint. Um, these decals are not the greatest and it's really heavy. He was then able to knock off the price for me down to $25, but I don't always try to do that. I try to be really honest about the condition and tell people how much I appreciate typewriters. If I tell them how much I love them, they're usually able to have a little bit of wiggle room with me, but I might be able to do that because I look like a 12 year old girl. I might have an advantage there that you don't have. So, Go to estate sales and yard sales. Try bundling, try negotiating, 
put up notifications on Facebook Marketplace, and check for places where typewriters aren't normally, like luggage walls and under tables, and you might be able to find something that's a lot cheaper in your area than you might find online. Again, it really is location-based. If you're in a city, you might be out of luck when it comes to getting cheaper items because there's a little bit more demand because there are more people in your area. I have zero competition in my local area for typewriters. In fact, there's so little competition that estate sale directors have started taking my phone number, calling me the typewriter girl, and texting me when they find typewriters because they just can't move them and I'm the only person that will buy them. But if you're in an area that's a little bit more populated, maybe consider taking a trip outside of the city, go to maybe a smaller town, and you might be able to find an antique store or a yard sale that will have a cheaper typewriter for you. That also, though, comes with selling typewriters. It also is location-based when you're setting a price. I actually had someone message me on Instagram the other day and ask me how much a typewriter was worth, and I said, man, it really depends on your area. In my local area, I can maybe get $50 out of a typewriter, which again is why I have to set that lower price limit, but if I were in Pittsburgh, which is two hours away from me, I might be able to sell that same typewriter for $100 or $150 if I'm willing to sit with it for a while. So it really depends on your area and who you're selling to. I'm not selling to other collectors because I'm selling locally. I'm selling to first-time typewriter owners, people who are buying them for their grandkids or their children, and in those cases, they're usually looking for a little bit of a cheaper typewriter, and because I'm buying mine for so cheap, I can provide that service to them. Now, when I sell my typewriters, I always make sure that they are in working condition first, and I usually put a new ribbon on the typewriter before I sell it because that's a big barrier to entry for a lot of local people who do not know anything about typewriters, they don't usually know where to get a typewriter ribbon. So by putting a cheap replacement ribbon on one as I'm selling it, I can actually increase the value to that person because they can just set it down and go. So if you're selling typewriters as opposed to buying typewriters, look at the local marketplace for those items. Consider the population and the medium income of your area. I tell that to my students too when we're talking about marketing products. But think about the market for your area. If there's a lot of typewriters on Facebook Marketplace and they're all listed in that $100 range and none of them are moving, that might mean that that price point is too high for your area. So consider selling them for less than that and make sure that your typewriter is in working condition because it might be worth more to somebody else if they can just set it down and go ahead and use it than it would be as a project unless you're a collector. And if you're selling to collectors, then by all means, put the price that is worth to you on that machine. In my area, I'm not selling to those kinds of people, so I am trying to make sure that my machines are affordable for first-time buyers. And I kind of like selling to first-time buyers of typewriters because I get to be the person to introduce them to that machine. So I get to show them all the cool functions on that machine, how to feed paper into it. I get to send them links to where they could buy a ribbon replacement someday. And I just kind of really like that level of interaction. That's something that's really fun to me. So consider those things if you're selling typewriters as opposed to buying them. One more thing, you might be able to get a typewriter for cheaper even in a higher populated area if there are some things wrong with it. You don't always have to be looking for a pristine condition typewriter in order to make it work for you. Sometimes cleaning a typewriter or putting a new ribbon in it is all that it needs. And somebody who doesn't know anything about typewriters might not know that. So consider looking for a typewriter that looks a little gross or a little dirty and dusty and like it's been in a horror movie because you might be able to get that typewriter for a lot cheaper, put in a little bit of effort and actually get a really great machine out of that. I did that with one of my estate sale typewriters. I actually took a machine that had some corrosion damage on it. I sandblasted it and repainted it. It only took me a couple of days and that machine is worth so much more now to the person that I gave it to because it's customized. And I got the typewriter for 15 bucks. So consider doing something like that or consider looking at your typewriters as a little bit more of a project and you might be able to find a typewriter for a much cheaper cost. So that's a little bit about the cheaper machines in my collection. I really like cheap typewriters. I know that's not a popular opinion, but I like buying typewriters for cheaper prices because it adds to the idea of the hunt. Now it's gotta meet more criteria every time I see a typewriter. Not only does it limit the hoarding problem, but it also makes this hobby for me a little bit more affordable. I'm not making a living off of YouTube or selling my typewriters. I'm just doing it for fun. And to be able to sustain myself off of that, I just have to make sure that I'm getting out of a typewriter what I put into it. And I sold a 
typewriter this morning for $45 and it paid for almost every single typewriter on this table. So I really like being able to look at that kind of balance in my collection, but that's just my personal preference and everybody is different. If you're looking for a very specific machine, you might have to go other places and you might have to pay a more premium price for that item if you're looking for something specific. But if you're just out there hunting for your next project or you just wanna try a typewriter or you're just happy with whatever you can find, like me, consider using some of these tips to get yourself a more budget-friendly typewriter. If you're interested in more typewriter content or more stories about the typewriters on this table or the rest of my collection, consider checking out some of the other videos on this YouTube channel. I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I wanna thank you all so much for watching and remind you, you're just my type, writer.